Yo, so we're gonna hit a subject head on today. Raining outside. When it's raining outside, I do my videos inside because good buddy don't like to get cold. Got a DM that I thought was a real intriguing question that we probably should talk about here. Is uh, some people have seen me on my spinning rods. Occasionally, uh, I'll use, you can see this rod right here is pulled up with, with braid, braid to floor carbon. You know, that's real popular right now is to use braid to floor carbon. Uh, but occasionally, you'll see me fishing straight fluorocarbon on my spinning reels and they were just kind of digging into why and and you know what's the deal why you not why you not with the cool crowd doing what everybody else doing well first of all i've always been a guy that like i like i don't just really just take what people say is the best for the best i try everything that's one of the advantages of being able to fish on the water a lot and spending a lot of time filming and fishing and practicing I got time to kind of really experiment and see what's best for what different scenarios so forth. You know, I decided to do something I'm calling straight up fishing school. It's basically a deal where we can kind of get together and you can personally interact with me. Um, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna learn about the sport of fishing at my school, straight up fishing school. You can register for my first ever straight up fishing school. Check out the link in the description box on this video. It's going to be in Anderson, South Carolina, February 29th. Make sure you come. All the information is in the, in the, uh, in the description box. It's going to be a great time. We're going to be talking about pre-spawn tactics. I'm going to show you how to catch largemouth, how to specifically target largemouth, how to specifically target spotted bass. And we're just going to go into really in-depth discussion on how do you catch fish this time of the year. So make sure you register for that deal. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I... To cut to the chase, you need both. I need both. I shouldn't say you need both. I need both. I need braid to fluorocarbon combos. Sometimes there's, there's even a situation we'll talk about in this video where you use straight braid when you're spinning your rods. Uh, braid to fluoro, and you need straight fluorocarbon. Let me tell you why. Dig into it. Um, this is a loose 2000 size spinning reel. This is the TLC 2000. Let's see. This is, let's see which one this is. Yes, this is the TLC 2000 right here. And I've got this on a favorite hex. This particular rod is a 7 610 actually. This is a 610, 610 rod here. Um, and, I, and you see me use that. The hex is a new rod that we just got. I'm not even sure if it's available to the public yet. But let me tell you, the hex is, dude, that's something. Uh, the next one, that, the one you've seen me using almost all of my videos is this one right here. This is the TLC 3000 on the six stick, favorite six stick right here. Seven foot one. Uh, you know, that's just a good rod. 100,000 on that rod right there too. Or it contributed to me winning a lot of money this, this past year. Sometimes I use braid. Sometimes I use, or sometimes I use braided florals. Sometimes I use straight braid. Here's why. All right. There's advantages of both. You're gonna need both in certain situations. This is what I've found in my experience, why I will use straight fluorocarbon sometimes instead of braid to fluorocarbon. Here's the advantage of using braid to fluorocarbon. Get better casting distance. Bro, this grass is not, not this grass, they come off in that stuff. Oh my God, I got it. smoother casting distance. I don't know if you've ever watched, when you go to make a cast with braid, that small diameter braid, it stays in a very small coil when it's exiting the reel, which means there's less resistance on the eyes when it's, the line is exiting your, your, your rod. So it lets you cast much further. You can cast lighter baits with a braid to fluoro combination because the, the small diameter lets that line feed off the reel so much better, so much easier. So when I'm using weightless baits, um, when I'm using, you know, if I'm making kind of long casts and I need to make sure I get good hook penetration, those are the situations where that braid to fluorocarbon really, really shines and really tends to do better. Uh, you know, they, I, there's really no reason for you, you know, there's, there's honestly not too many situations where you don't need to use braid to floral, but there's just a few situations where I feel like there's a better option. Does that make sense? When you see me fishing a wacky rig, when you see me casting a, uh, like, a like a shaky head down the bank, when you see me casting a Nico rig or skipping around docks, more than likely I'm probably gonna have 
a braid to floral combination. 15 pound test braid, 15 or 20 pound test braid tied to eight, 10, 12, 15 pound test fluorocarbon. A lot of the advantage of using braid, this, and we got this from Salt Order. This comes from Salt Order. One of the biggest advantages of using a braid to floral combination is you can be super versatile on the fly with your leader material. So I don't know if you've ever tried this or not. Have you ever tried to cast 15 pound test mono or fluorocarbon on a, on a spinning reel? Dude, it ain't happening, bro. Like it ain't happening. That stuff will coil up on you like, like a slinky. It's all bad. But let's say you're fishing in a situation, salt water is a great example for this because this is what I do. You need to cast that lighter bait, but perhaps you're catching bigger fish perhaps you're fishing a light bait in really heavy cover, you can take that braid to fluorocarbon, use that 20 pound test floor, uh, 20 pound test braid or 15 pound test braid that you can cast because it has such a small diameter. So you can take that light bait and get it out there. But you don't want to necessarily tie straight braid. You can use 15 pound test fluorocarbon. And now even though you're casting a bait that's weightless or very light, now you can muscle them out of there. So you can use 17 pound test, 20 pound test. When I go to salt order, when I'm fishing for redfish and everything like that, when you see me fishing, most of the time I'm using 20 pound test braid and 15, 17, 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader. So it's, it looks like I'm finessy, but I'm just using such a small bait, those little three inch minnows and diesel minnows and things like that. They don't cast the best on casting gear, but they cast really good on spinning gear and the spinning gear has a much better drag, which is just awesome when you're fishing for saltwater species and you let them run and you know, it's, that's just something that I'm kind of passionate about. But, you know, that setup just works so much better for certain deals and you can up that pound test line or you can come back down six, eight pound test line. The biggest advantage of braided fluorocarbon in my opinion is the versatility that it gives you to be able to upsize or downsize and not re-spool your entire line. Of course, it's a little bit more sensitive, it casts further, um, a, lot of, a lot of advantages. So you can use that. Now, here's a situation. Here's a situation where I may go to situation that I probably would try to go to straight fluorocarbon on a spinning rod. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, it just, it really didn't exist. There he is. Ain't that bad. No. Nah. There's times where I like that little bit of sponginess that fluorocarbon gives you when you're when you're making when you're out there fishing. One is reaction baits. And that's uh, let me break this down. Reaction baits. Sometimes I will throw number five shad wrap, smaller crankbaits on a spinning rod, jerk baits on a spinning rod. And in that situation, I prefer to have fluorocarbon. Another situation. I've kind of got to where I like to throw small swim baits, miniature swim baits on straight fluorocarbon for, for bass and spotted basses. They're bad about, especially spotted bass in the fall time when they're, when they're feeding on those real small shad. They're bad at nipping at the bait and rolling over it and doing the same thing they do with top water, but they do it with swim baits. That little bit of sponginess, it keeps me from being so reactive on the hook set. And I don't know what it is, but I just like the feel of it. So much of it for me is just the feel of it. It just feels really good with that fluorocarbon. I like the way it feels smooth going through the guides. I don't know, I just kind of got to where I got old school and I was starting to like using the straight fluorocarbon on my spinning reels a little bit more. When we went to Canada, when Mark Daniels and I, we went to Canada and we were fishing in, in the grass earlier this year for those big smallmouth, we caught 45 pounds of smallmouth in one day. We had a one day tournament, it was like, daylight to 12 or one and then we went out we weighed our fish and went out and did it again for that evening i caught all my fish on straight fluorocarbon 
six pounds Lewis what's a five pound that is all day long look at that ladies and gentlemen beautiful small mouth oh you hold it up one more time <laughs> Scott Martin, Scott Martin, front row seat. Look at that, supporting Team USA. Let me tell you why. One thing I noticed. In practice, I was noticing, even though it was a fall time tournament, the fish were biting extremely funny. Like, they wanted your bait to stay still more. The more you move your bait, the more it worked against you. Especially in the current that was up there on the St. Lawrence River. So, um, one thing I was doing, I was using straight fluorocarbon. I found this out on accident by using some camera equip equipment to get some underwater footage earlier this spring. The lack of the lack of stretch and braid can cause you to really overwork your bait at times. Not all the time, but at times. You're moving it a lot more than you think you are. Give you a perfect example. You ever tried to use a frog on mono? And you've seen how hard it is to make that frog walk because of the stretch in the mono. That'll prove it to you. If you don't believe me, try that. Try some mono. Get 20 pound test, 25 pound test mono and try to walk a frog and see how hard that is to do. The well, same thing is going on when you're throwing a Ned Rig, a shaky head or whatever. When you're using that straight braid, you're, when you're shaking your rod tip, you're moving the bait a lot more than you really think you are. I found that out trying to capture underwater footage. When you use straight fluorocarbon, that little bit of sponginess, there's much more resistance in the line when you go to work your bait and you don't pull it and move it as, as much. Saying all that to say this, when we were flipping those drop shots and net rigs and those holes in the grass, it was real important to let that thing go down in, in the holes in the grass and just sit there and hold it. Now, when it's windy, that straight fluorocarbon, you just got better line management and that bait stays in place much better. With braid, I feel like you, you may move it a little bit too much. Furthermore, I just like the way it felt. It just felt really good using straight fluorocarbon. It was real windy that day and I just had better line management. Could you have caught those fish on braided fluorocarbon? Probably, because I can tell you my partner caught them on it. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's what we came to see, huh? Huh? We just bought the leak. That's a five yonder. That's a four ninety. Come on, big mama, chill out. Four ninety eight. He did just fine. But for me, it was the feel that I had. I felt like I was in contact with my bait much better. I just liked the control that I had. Braid is a much lighter material, and when you're fishing in wind, the wind can manipulate your bait a lot more than you want. But when I'm using straight fluorocarbon, A, it's a lot heavier material, and it's going to sink in the water. It's less buoyant than braid is. So when, I, when it's windy out there, that braid doesn't catch a bow in the line, or the fluorocarbon doesn't bow in the wind near as much, therefore let me have better line management, better contact with my bait. I know what I'm doing, I can feel the bottom, I know if my bait is moving or if it's stopped. I like that about straight fluorocarbon. It is awesome for that. So think about that. Next time you're out there trying to figure out should you use braid of floral, or straight floral. I promise you, just try it again. Just give it a try. This is kind of went out of style. Like this is taboo. This is like bell bottoms. Nobody really wants to do this anymore. Brush piles, fishing brush piles. I do a lot of that at home. I have found out that using straight fluorocarbon when you're fishing deep brush piles is almost the best way to go. Let me prove it to you. I did this, I found this out this past summer in August when I fished the couple in Hamilton. I was using straight fluorocarbon, six, an eight pound test. A six and eight pound test is just because that's what's manageable. It has nothing to do with the fish being able to see it. It's all about line management on this issue. So six and eight pound test. When you're fishing fluorocarbon, typically you're gonna be fishing some type of small plastic, some small worm. When you're fishing brush in, in deep water, 
you're typically going to be pretty much Texas rigging whatever soft plastic that you're, you know, casting, flipping, or however vertical fishing, whatever you're doing. <clears throat> Here's the advantage. In my opinion, you're going to hang a lot less with straight fluorocarbon. I'm going to prove it to you. If you've ever tried flipping wood with braid, you ever notice how quickly, how inefficient it is, how quickly your hook punches through your plastic and you stay hung in the wood a lot? If you don't believe me, if you've never tried it, go try it. Next time you're out there fishing, start flipping around with your braid on your bait caster. And notice how even when you just go to pull that, that bait over a limb or over a log or a lay down, watch how quickly it snags. It turns over, the fl hook flips over and snags. That's great in some situations, but in wood, it can be extremely frustrating. Using that fluorocarbon, you're going to get hung some, but maybe I'll get hung five less times throughout the day. That could be an extra fish catch. That little bit of sponging is sometimes just lets that drop shot or knit rig just come right up over those limbs because there's a little sponginess in there and the hook doesn't punch through just quite as easy. Now, of course, now when I go to put a little stink on my hook set, I'm going, I'm going to get the hook to come through. That's all good. But when I'm just pulling it over, the, I know I'm in the brush and I go to pull it over, you're a lot better off with straight fluorocarbon. It ain't going, that hook's not going to punch through and you're going to be a lot efficient. So if you don't hang in the brush pile, you're not going to shake it to death, get out there and shake it to death, and then scatter all the fish that were lined up on that brush pile. Uh, other thing is, let's just face it, when you're fishing brush pile, you're going to hang up. I mean, you're going to hang up. Now, nobody likes to talk about this, but I do as a professional, time is everything, and to set that, there is nothing that frustrates me more than having to set down and retie my leader material. I hate it. I hate it, bro. Like, I'm a fisherman, not a professional, not tire. I didn't get into this to start tying knots. I like fishing. So that extra time that I have to, to get down to the bottom of the boat and retie, find the leading material, find the line. Oh my God, I didn't tie it right. You're gonna break off when you're, when you're in brush piles. I was saving time because every once in a while I would get hung up in the brush and all I had to do was retie my drop shot. I didn't have to go find the leading material and tie two new, new knots, three new knots with you talking about a, a drop shot. You got the leading material, then you tie it onto the hook and then to the sinker. You know, that's a lot of knots, a lot of time. So you're cutting out two steps right there and then you're also eliminating a weak point. Line sizes with, with straight fluorocarbon. You're gonna be a little bit more limited to what you can use when you go straight fluorocarbon. When you go straight fluorocarbon, you're pretty much limited in, in my opinion. On a size 2000 or even a 3000 size reel, you're pretty much limited to six and eight pound tests, maybe 10 pound tests. When you're talking about fluorocarbon, it can be extremely difficult to deal with when you get into those higher pound tests. It has more memory, it coils more, it's a harder, more stiff material. Um, and you're gonna be better off, stay with six and eight pound tests. Set your drag, get the right, get the right rod, uh, rod power, right, right rod action. You're gonna be just fine. I promise you, you'll be just fine. You can use 10 pound tests. You're gonna suffer with casting uh, distance, and you're gonna suffer with probably a few more bird nests with uh, with 10 pound tests. You can still do it. You can get away with it, and not do it sometimes in salt water with straight fluorocarbon. You can get away with 10 pound tests. Maybe to help you a little bit, go up, upside your spinning reel spool a little bit. Maybe that'll help you. But six, eight pound test, you're going to be golden. And if you, you pick the right equipment, you're going to be just fine with six and eight pound tests. So that's my take on it. That's all I got to say. You want to use straight braid to fluorocarbon like we've been doing for the last, you know, it's been really popular the last 10 years, go for it. But what I'm challenging you to do is revisit the straight fluorocarbon again. I'm telling you, I've learned some things about it that, that's made it better for me. Uh, you do have to... You do have to understand the product a little bit better to get everything you need out of it. But there's there's there are certain situations for me that it feels better, it works better, and I think it's a better option at times than braid to fluorocarbon.